Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course Reasoning and Logic. This one is all about a proof by division in two cases. And we're just going to dive right in using an example. So the claim that we're going to prove today is the following. For all n larger than or equal to zero, we claim that 3 divides n to the third plus 3n squared plus 2n. And of course, we are talking about integers here. You will learn later that we can denote this as n being an element of the set, capital N. Okay, so let's start our proof. Well, we need to prove a for all statement, so of course the first thing we do is we take an arbitrary integer k, where k is larger than or equal to zero. Now what we need to do is we need to prove that this claim holds for k. So again, that 3 divides k to the third plus 3k and squared plus 2k. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to split k into three possible cases, three possible values, if you will. We're going to divide the, it into these three cases, and these cases are based on the remainders that you could get if you were to divide k by 3. So k could be a multiple of 3, so k could be 3m. And if we have k equals 3m, then we can just fill out 3m in the equation and do a bit of math. And then, having done this bit of math, we see that indeed we get to 3 times some constant c. Now I've sped up the math in this video, but take a moment to pause the video at any time you want to verify that my math is indeed correct. So having done case 1, we now take a look at case 2. So what if k is not exactly a multiple of 3, but what if it's a multiple of 3 plus 1? So we have a remainder of 1 when dividing by 3. What happens? Well, again, we do a lot of algebra, but as it turns out, if we do our math carefully, in the end, we again have 3 times some constant here. Finally, we can do the same for the third case. The third case says, okay, what if k is not 3 times n? It's also not three to a multiple of 3 plus 1, but what if it's a multiple of 3 plus 2? In other words, it's a number that gives a remainder of 2 when dividing by 3. Now in this third case, again, a bit of algebra, but as it turns out, this also is 3 times a constant. So now that we know that in all three cases the claim holds, this means that it must always hold. Why? Well, because every number is guaranteed to either be a multiple of 3, a multiple of 3 plus 1, or a multiple of 3 plus 2. There are no other options for any integer to be. Furthermore, since k was an arbitrary number, we know that it must hold for all numbers. And there you have it, our proof by division in two cases. Quite a long one this time around. But with that, we've come to the end of this pencast, which was all about division in two cases. And I'll see you around for the next one.